So what's better, dividend paying stocks that pay high yields or ones that pay lower yields? The answer might surprise you. And if you think you already know the answer to the question, leave it down below in the comments and hit the like button if you were right. Hi, my name is Josh, and in this video, I'm going to explain why the answer to that question might be neither. So you might be wondering what yield percentages are considered high and what percentages are considered low. High dividends are generally considered 5% and above, and low ones are generally considered 2% and below. Examples of this being AT&T, which currently has a high dividend yield percent of 8.39%, and the S&P 500, which currently has a yield of 1.6%. Plot twist though. The S&P 500 pays out $1.63 in dividends, while AT&T only pays out $0.52 cents in dividends. This is an example of how dividend yields are relative to the price of each share, and it shows the ratio between the amount paid and the current price of each share. So let's look at some pros and cons regarding dividend yields. Pro. Higher yields produce higher dividend payments, which then increases your buying power, which then allows you to buy more stocks, which give you more dividends, and allows you to buy even more stocks. This right here illustrates the power of the dividend snowball effect. Another pro for high yields is that it attracts buyers, which in turn raises the price and increases your equity if you own that stock. A con for high yields though, is that the selected company might be a little bit more risky. This could be because a company might not be doing so well and they choose to temporarily raise their dividend payment to attract buyers. This is risky because they won't be able to sustain those higher payments in the long run and they might have to cut or remove their dividend altogether. This will then cause shareholders to sell the stock and you might get stuck holding the bag when the price drops. You can also signal a recent drop in price. For example, the stock's price was $80 and it had to pay out $4 annually in dividend payments, then its yield is 5%. Now if that same stock drops to $40 and has to pay out that same $4 annually, then its dividend yield has now increased to 10%. So you can see as price goes down, dividend yields go up, and when price goes up, dividend yields go down. When it comes to lower yields, pros include the company stability, more money that the company now has to reinvest in itself to grow and expand, and there's still room for companies to grow their dividend payments over time. Dividend aristocrats such as Hormel Foods, Lowe's, and General Dynamics have relatively low dividend percentages, but they've been increasing their dividend payouts every year for at least 25 years in a row. A lot of growth companies will either choose to pay low dividends or pay no dividends at all in order to reinvest all that money back into themselves to grow and expand. The cons associated with lower yields are obviously lower dividend payments, and that might affect your buying power and your compounding growth over time. It also might not be as attractive to dividend investors looking for a company to put their money into. So the answer seems a little obvious, right? Not necessarily. For example, younger or newer investors can afford more risk because they have a lot longer time for their returns to compound. While older investors who have been in the market a lot longer may want some stability because they've already seen their portfolios grow. If you're like me, maybe you want a little bit of both. If you look at my analytics, you can see that I have a higher average yield of 7%, and in it I have stocks that pay between 4% and 8%. I plan on keeping this account relatively aggressive though because I am starting later in life and I am playing catch up. I am, however, choosing quality stocks that I believe in for the long term, and I'm not just chasing higher yields for the sake of them being higher. I also plan on opening a second retirement account in the near future, where I'm going to be focusing on lower yielding growth stocks, and I'll be able to see how these two accounts compare over time. So what do you think? Do you agree? Let me know in the comments down below. If this video satisfied your curiosity or helped in any way, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Also check out these videos over here if you want to learn how to make $1,000 every month through dividend investing or if you want to see what stocks I have in my portfolio.